Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you what exactly causes a React component to re-render. Alright, so we're going to go into the foundational, you know, aspect of the how, how come a component will re-render and what makes that uh, happen, okay? So I just have a basic React app already set up and I have some examples already set up. So I'm just going to go through these four examples that I have and I'll show you one by one different ways that a component could get re-rendered, alright? So in this first example, it's super straightforward. I just have uh, the input getting set up. And one second here. I did not mean to have this. OK, so I have this basic input. And what this example is, it just has a use state hook. It has some uh, value that is getting passed to the input. And then it has a set value, which will get updated from this on change method here. So as you can tell, example one will get rendered. I'm console.logging that. And anytime I update, I add a input, I type in something, it will cause the component to get re-rendered. If you see here, example one is getting re-rendered four times because for each character, it's uh, causing the component to re-render. So this example is just saying any component that has internal state and you update that state, it will cause that in, uh, component to re-render itself. All right. Now, if you know that it won't cause any other component to re-render outside of it, so like the parent component, app did not get re-rendered. Cool. So now we'll just that was a pretty basic one uh, to get the ball rolling. So that's let's move to the second one. Let's. I'm going to have a form here. Example two form, and let me put that. All right, so inside this form, let's see what's going on. I'm gonna show two things here in the form component. So I'm gonna have uh, two examples, which is the first one, a child component can re-render a parent component by whenever the state is lifted up. Okay, so in this example, what I have here, I have an array that's render creating these components on the fly. So I have input components being rendered. And I'm also passing set inputs and inputs to the input component. Inside the component, I will update the state every time one of these gets updated. Okay, whenever we type something in. So by what we're doing there is we're lifting state up, which means that this inputs will get updated, which will cause form to get re-rendered. Okay, now let me show you. So if I type in something, if you see how it got highlighted there, every anytime a component gets re-rendered, it'll get highlighted because of the React DevTools extension. If you don't have it installed, you'll want to install it from the Chrome Web Store. And just make sure uh, you go to the components in the uh, inspect element and then go to this gear icon and make sure you check this box. Cool. So now anytime I type in any of these 10 com inputs, it will cause form to get re-rendered. Okay, And any component inside of form to get re-rendered. So that kind of brings me to the, my second point. Any child components inside the parent will also get re-rendered if the parent component gets re-rendered. Okay, So whenever I update this one, this is outside of this one. This is a separate input, okay? And this is going to update this name state. It will cause this entire, all of these components to get re-rendered. So form will get re-rendered, which will cause this to get re-rendered. And then this entire array will have to re-render all the inputs. Cool. So I'm not going into any like optimizations or anything. I'm just showing you what causes it. And the reason why I'm making this tutorial is because, you know, in the whenever you're building your projects, you might be just developing components and you might run into performance issues. I just want to make that awareness. OK, so as you are developing these components, well, if I make this change, if I have it set up like this, it's going to make all this re-render. Do I really want it that way or do I want to set it up a different way or how can I optimize it so that it doesn't always get re-rendered? So if we know the foundations of it, it will make the structure of how we set up our components much easier. 
in a more efficient, I would say. Cool. So now let's go to step three. I mean, not step three, example three. So here we're going to look into the key prop concept. All right, so I have a simple select and then options in here, and then I have a simple input. Now this input will have a default value, which is set to the option from this use state hook here. And then we also are passing in the option to this key prop. So anytime that this key gets, uh, this key value gets changed, it will cause that component to update. Okay, re-render I would say. So now if I change it to option three, two, whatever, it will cause it to re-render. Now, if you know about this default value, it only updates the initial time, the initial render, I would say. And if you don't have this key, and let's just say, you know, you have a something set here. And, you know, your intention is if the user changes to option two, you want it to re-render to because you have some placeholder or something like that for option two. Well, it won't actually re-render because the default value only gets rendered on the initial and just setting the option to that default value does not cause it to re-render. So that's interesting actually, uh, because anytime the prop changes, the value of that prop changes, you would expect it to re-render, but um, in this case it doesn't. So the a way around that is you wanna have this key. So the rule for this key is any value that you set to any component that you have a key for, whether it's input, whatever, even it's on the base, like uh, even if you come in here and go to index.js and you set a key here, and I don't know, whatever, you just set it to the window.location. Um, path name. Let's just say that. If this path name gets updated, it will cause the entire app to get re rendered. All right. So that's the cool thing about the key. And it has its benefits uh, in these cases. So that's example number three. Now let's go to example four. Um, and if you guys have any questions or any further comments to add to these examples or anything, any other type of examples that I missed, please um, comment below so that we can all learn. So now what we're gonna go into is, we're gonna import example four. And in example four, we're gonna talk about the context API. So I'm gonna import context. And I'm also gonna import the consumer. Okay, so we have this consumer input uh, component, which will be here. And then we have the context, and we're going to do dot provider. Let me just show you what's inside context so that you can see. All I'm doing here is just calling create context. It's just a null value and then exporting it. Okay, and then let's just place this div inside there. And okay, so on all consumer is going to do is take in the value from use context that we're going to provide in the value here. So, you know, what we could do here is just say, for an example, theme. We're going to, I'm going to follow the theme example that React Docs gives, where um, anytime they talk about the context, it's a good example. I'm just going to build on top of that. So, if you see here, Okay, um, let's just go ahead and get rid of that. And then I have two, two properties that I'm expecting, theme and then toggle theme. So this toggle theme is just a method to update the theme. And let's just use uh, the use state hook for that. Now, this kind of relates to example two, where the anytime the state is lifted up, it will cause all of the children component to re-render. So it's kind of an extension based off of that. But I'm just using it with the context API. So all 
Okay, so here we're gonna say, oh my goodness, I have it backwards. <laughs> Light is the default theme. And then we will just set it like that. And then what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to have a, oh, I didn't wanna actually call, take that out. Let's just have a method. I'm gonna have a set wrapper method. So I'm gonna say toggle theme. And then set theme. Let's get the previous state. And then we will just do a return value like this. So if if it's equal to light, then we will say return dark, otherwise return light. Cool. Okay, so then let's pass this in. All right, so now the consumer should be having these two properties and if it didn't it should have thrown an error but let's see it sure does so we have the theme well let's see we have toggle toggle theme yeah we do so we have the theme here and then we have the method for toggle theme all right so let's see let's look at this in action okay cool so you see here entire app will get re-rendered so any anything inside of this app here will get re-rendered so you want to be careful about that whenever you use context well technically you're using use state so uh, whenever you're prop drilling like this and you're using a setter method that will get updated um, you want to be careful about this so but this is exactly you know based off example two which will cause the children components to get re-rendered so an interesting thing about the provider is even if you have a component in here let's just say like um, forget about having the use state even if you have a component in here that does not consume to the provider and that provider gets re-rendered for some reason the uh, the component will also get re-rendered even though it does not consume to the provider so you want to be aware of those situations because those optimizations might need to be made if you're running into performance issues. So yeah, that's really uh, the basics of it. I just wanted to go over the basics of what causes a React component to re-render. And I hope that you know this is a good kind of refresher, hopefully, if not a good just foundation for you guys to go off of and build your components and structure them in such a way that your React app is uh, efficient. So yeah, guys, uh, if you guys like this video, please do like it. It helps with the uh, spreading out the video to other people. And please do subscribe to the channel if you did like the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.